70% of the marketers who use video in their campaigns say that the, the ROI is, I don't remember the exact vocabulary, but something like unquestionably worth it. Hi, welcome to SaaS Half Full, the only show serving B2B SaaS marketers. I'm Lindsay Groper, EVP at Panblast, and I will be both your host and bartender today. I reconnected with an old friend who I have not spoken to in over 15 years. We last saw each other on the expansive floors of the Consumer Electronics Show. We are now both in the B2B world and we've ditched our consumer days. But I'm speaking with Jeremy Toman, who is the co-founder of Omni Studios. And today we are talking all things video marketing. Now he showed me a stat, which surprised me that 70% of people that work in B2B marketing have only produced or used one or less video per year in their video marketing strategy. And this episode is for you. So if you fall into that 70%, please do listen. We're going to talk about what's holding you back from using video as part of your strategy, even though you know you need it, how to get started, and the best ways to wring all of the value that you can out of a video strategy. So if you'd care to, grab a drink and join me as I speak with Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy, welcome to SaaS Half Full. Thank you. Excited to be here. Jeremy and I were talking before I hit record, we have, I'm using air quotes if you're not watching and just listening, but known each other for what we think is at least 15 years. I think we last saw each other's faces on the massive trade show floor at CES many, many moons ago. That sounds so right. Yeah. I mean, actually I'm curious. So I've ended up at 20 CESs. How about yourself? You have me beat. The only thing I know is that the last few times I went, I had a special bat, like a special ribbon on the bottom of my badge that indicated I'd been there at least for a decade. So I, nice. you have me beat though. I, it's not over 20 I mean, it's been a while since I've been back, but you reached out to me, which I was excited about because now you are working in more of the B2B world as do we. So we're our consumer tech days, at least are slightly behind us, but we are going to talk today about video specifically. But before we do that, and you are so kind, we sent you a cocktail kit. You made it right before. What I didn't even ask what cocktail kit. What are you even drinking? What's in that thing? What's it called? Well, I had a few choices that I was sent. This is called Cocktail Courier. And I, you're not going to be able to see it because I'm at my office. I don't have a ton of um, supplies. But I used my favorite insulated tumbler to make a, what do they call it? A Grand Spicy Margarita. Ooh. So, All right. That's what I'm having there. I'm at home and I am drinking a, it's a canned vodka fresca, which I always, I like vodka fresca in and of itself. I actually prefer my mix over the canned mix, but I bought them in hopes I would love it, but give it a solid seven. So that is what I'm drinking. Cheers. Good to see you again, Jeremy. Cheers. By the way, mine is what I would order. Like this is like, it's done right in the box. There were limes, and salts and stuff. So perfect. Um, my last calls of the day are going to be pretty interesting, I think. But, I uh, love I'm it. I'm excited. It's a respectable hour. I mean, you were both on Eastern time. We are well into the PM hour, and it's a Thursday, right? Friday Eve. I think we're okay. Before we talk about our topic of the episode here, want to give our listeners an idea of who you are, Jeremy, a little bit of your backstory. Then we also want to hear what is Augie Studios, what problem do you solve, and why you exist. So I will turn it over to you. Awesome. Well, I'm Canadian. We'll start with that. I've spent most of my career in the convergence of tech and media and video. So way back when, 20 odd years ago, I was first employee in at Sling Media. If you remember the Sling Box, that was my first real like big product I got to be a part of. And that was an amazing venture. For those of you who have never heard of the Sling Box, but you have heard of Sling TV, same thing. But just many, many years later, we started with a box. It ended up as a service thanks to this network. I spent a few years as what I guess we'd call today a fractional CPO. And companies that your listeners might have heard of, I helped get companies like Voodoo, Sonos, Boxy, Waze, and others in some of their early days. I either worked with them on some nuance of their product or their go-to-market strategy. I then spent... A, few more years back in startup life, I ran my own startup called Digit, and we had built an app that let you have a live TV and streaming TV all in the same place. We were the first ones to do that about 10 or so years ago. We got acquired a few years later, 
we both have kids in common. So as my kids were getting a little older, I realized that it was probably not prudent to go back to another startup. So I went over to CBS Interactive. I ran product there for about four years. All of that, by the way, had been in the Bay Area. And then I moved to New York about seven and a half years ago. I spent more time with CBS and then eventually shifted over to Warner Media and was there for a couple of years running product and innovation into the pandemic. And then in January of 2022, I decided to go back into startup life. And here I am again. And here we are again. I love it. So tell us, what is your current role, current life? What do you do? And what does Augie Studios do? So my current roles, I'm a co-founder. We have two other founders. One's my CPO, one's my CTO. I'm the CEO of Augie Studio. And in a nutshell, the shortest answer I have is we are here to help everybody with video who can't already help themselves. And so if you think about it, you've got like influencers who tend to use CapCut and TikTok for everything they do because those products are perfect for what influencers need. And on the other end of the spectrum, you've got tools like Adobe Premiere Pro, Avid, DaVinci Resolve. And those tools are perfect if you're a professional video editor making like a Super Bowl ad or Oppenheimer. And if you're you and me, or probably most of your listeners, and you need video in your marketing, and you can't afford to outsource it, you don't have the internal skill set, and you don't have the time to learn anything, we made Augie just for you. And so our market is the 70% of businesses who make one or less videos a year. And we launched the product. We actually have been testing for over two years. We have had over 200,000 people come through the platform, and we launched commercially in June of this past year. That is awesome. Congratulations. That is a, definitely a big milestone. And I would venture to guess that the vast majority of our listeners do fall into that category on that of that 70%. Uh, we certainly do. Let's, well, let's start macro and then we'll drill down into more specifics. But talk to us about how you've seen the video space evolve. I mean, when you think about you know, companies using video for commercial purposes, over even just the last two or three years, I mean, certainly the efficiencies that AI has brought us at scale has, has changed. We all understand that. But like from your perspective, just how have you seen this industry evolve over the last couple of years? I'll give you a stat. So I was at Sling Media in 2004. We launched the product in 2005. And right around the same time, a little startup launch called YouTube. So for, for anyone listening, this is about how long ago I'm talking. And... I don't know about you, Lindsay, but I was always paying attention with the big YouTube milestones where it's like, as of now, there's a thousand hours per day of videos being uploaded to YouTube. And then it was 10,000 hours, et cetera. We're at roughly 30,000 hours of video uploaded per hour to YouTube today. 34 million videos to TikTok per day. So when I think about this kind of where are things changing, we are now getting those first Nielsen reports that YouTube itself vies with the major networks as far as time spent on device. So I think we can all say that the social video revolution is a thing. Where we are now that I think is so interesting is it's really dominated by, by very few formats. If you really, really think about it, you have a lot of like compilation stuff like fail videos. And uh, I, I always love like satisfying videos of people doing their jobs you know, my kids and I watch those kind of things. Oh, there, yes. They always say, oh, that's so satisfying. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, we watch those kind of things. But then you sort of end up in what I was saying earlier. You end up in sort of like first-person land or, 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 you know, we call it a lot like webcam recording videos where there's a lot of people just looking at the screen, not doing much. And then you have the other end where you have like Mr. Beast going off and doing amazing stuff. This is a time where there's actually more innovation in the format of what the video that people are doing. So for example, have you heard of VTubers? No. A lot of people haven't. I'm guessing a lot of your listeners haven't. VTubers is virtual YouTubers. It's people who do nothing but have an avatar, not a real persona, oh, just God. an avatar. Okay. It could be a dragon, a robot, a spaceship, a rock. I'm sure there's a rock somewhere. It's the internet, right? And that is the entirety of the content. They're at over a billion hours of viewing time per month. So this is people watching non-people right and so that's one big show no, no i and also have a six-year-old and i don't want him watching that shit <laughs> yeah I, I mean do you remember the the what was it called not barbie gates there was this whole scandal a few years ago of these like cgi movies that were like attacking kids and it was terrible 
we see the big rise in faceless videos, a lot of like explainer videos where you don't really need a lot of assets. You can do things with B-roll and stock. Where I think we're going to see the next wave is even more. By the way, one more. One more. Have you heard of sludge videos? Sludge? Sludge. That was the no. word. Do I want to so know? Yeah, it's not a bad thing. You're Because I'm sure your kids are watching it. It's usually on like TikTok. It's always portrait mode. And what, if you've ever seen them watching where like, Half the screen is like someone playing like Minecraft or mm. Subway Surfers. And the other half of the screen is like someone washing a fence. It, so they, these are called sledge videos where they insert a video game overlaying their own content. It's really interesting stuff. So I think we're about to have this phase of like really interesting different kinds of videos. And I will say like, whether it's our tool, but there's so much more happening in this kind of AI video space, right? We're on the editing side, but there's video generation capabilities. I'm sure a lot of people have heard of Sora. I'm sure a lot of people haven't heard of the 20 other competitors that are actually live today that they could try. Platforms like Hyper AI, uh, HAIPR, Flicky, and several, Pika, and several others where you can say, I want to have like a unicorn charging down Times Square, and it'll yeah. generate that for you. So not to, I think I went long on the question, but there's a lot happening in video right now. Some of it just fun and silly. Some of it really on the professional side. It's pretty exciting. When you think about the 70% of us, I'll throw myself to that category. What mindset do most marketers have when it comes to video? And how does that need to change or evolve if they're going to stay afloat? So I'm going to probably get my numbers slightly off, but I'm in ballpark. If I'm not mistaken, there are two stats, both between 85 and 90% of marketers say one of those. So one's like 85 and one's like 88. I'm not yet using video and I know I must. And the other one is I can't use video because it's either too expensive or too time consuming for me. Sure. And so we see that like there's such this interesting parallel of I wish I could do more with video and I perceive the obstacles are there. What I'll say is again, not serving us, but if that's your mindset, there are many new tools for you to try. And I really would suggest going and playing with some of this AI technology. And this is where like, there's so many flavors of it. Figure out what your brand needs, but get rid of that mindset. You can do video. I don't know who you are out there, but now like videos at our, at our fingertips and it's just getting easier month by month. Yeah. We as an agency um, finally started leveraging video this year. Look at us. I mean, I, hello. I mean, I am a, a marketing agency, right? Specifically PR, but like, this is what, you know, I believe in it. I believe in marketing right. and we just started incorporating video. And the thing that was encouraging and it's sort of a barrier that was removed for us is that like shitty video works. And I mean right. that in, you don't have to have the equipment and you don't have to have this high production value. It's not even what necessarily audiences and buyers want anyway. I mean, there's a time and a place for that. I'm, I'm not saying that, but the fact that like shitty video can work in the medium that we need it to, I was like, okay, we could do this. And so that was a mindset shift for me of, because I was always worried about the quality. Right. So talk to us a little bit about that. And, and obviously when I say shitty video, I don't mean like terrible, but meaning that an iPhone can be okay. It sure. doesn't have be this you know highly produced type of content unless I'm thinking about that wrong. No, I, I think you're thinking about it dead right. And the first statement I make is I'm going to just modify your language slightly <laughs> to how, yes. how we actually think about things. Well, I, I'm glad you say it. We think about it where what if video is good enough for its purpose? And I want to be clear, we have been trained to think that good enough is sort of like, oh, that, I guess it's good enough. It's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is think about this. So you're a marketer, Lindsay, your listeners, you are trying to get on TikTok for your brand, right? And so today you're doing nothing and, and you know you should do something. The lifespan of that video on TikTok is probably measured in hours. If you're really lucky, it's days. The good news is this, unless you did something terribly bad or quite good, it ain't days. So right. either you've done something so embarrassing, it's going to get watched forever. Hello, left shark or you're going to do something so interesting that people want to watch more of it. I encourage marketers to think good enough for, is this good enough to represent my brand on TikTok right now for the next X hours to drive some awareness of a thing, right? And so that could be you doing influencer style content, like I love this shirt, et cetera. It could be using stock content. It doesn't have to be 
super top content. You could do a quick recording on your iPhone, add in some simple visual effects with any of the tools out there. Good enough. Not the pejorative version, but we'll right. reach your audience and make like there'll be ROI. That's the other thing. 70% of marketers who use video in their campaigns say that the, the ROI is, I don't remember the exact vocabulary, but something like unquestionably worth it, mm -hmm. right? And it's 70% unquestionably worth it. So the rest, your mileage may vary. And, and look, to be fair, not every business, right? if you're running a self-storage unit in a field of other self-storage units, I don't know what video is going to do for you. However, if you're doing a self-storage unit in an area where there's nobody around and people might not know you exist, could be a really interesting idea. So every company could be thinking this way, but to your point, you know, whether it's the shitty video or just good enough, yeah. you know, it's better to be out there and trying, right? Than letting this, you know, we're in a video first world, right? You right. can't be video second anymore. Right. And the other area of pushback I hear sometimes is that we don't have the right spokesperson or our, you yes. know, our CEO or spokesperson isn't polished and it's like, perfect. Great. Right. <laughs> so expand on that point a little. That's completely right. So again, to, to not date myself too much, but I remember when the idea of recording video in portrait mode was not only offensive to me, but anybody I was working with, like, it was like, what are you all talking about? Right now it is the dominant form of social media. So if those kind of thoughts are in your head to Lindsay's point that, you know, you're good enough for video, whoever you are right Correct. now. Here's the other good news. If you really like, I don't want to be on video. I don't like the sound of my voice. I, you know, walked into a poll today and don't want to show my face on camera, whatever the thing might be, or, or you don't need to protect your identity for some reason. You know, you're in a protected class and you've got to get something out there. The good news is there's lots of other ways to do things. So I'm going to name two startups I know of. One's called DID, it's literally D-ID. And the other one is called Synthesia. They'll let you create, as I was mentioning before, a virtual avatar. And in fact, you can make something that looks sort of you-ish. There's like, remember the Wii characters? You can do that kind of stuff. Yeah. So you can make a avatar of yourself, or as I said earlier, be a dragon, be a robot, be whatever you want it to be. Make your company's mascot or logo come to life. So good news is you don't have to put your face on camera. Second, there's AI voices. There's a lot of you can do it yourself using startups like Eleven Labs and Murph. You can come to platforms like ours and many others in the AI space where in Augie, you can give us a script or have the script writer write one for you. Pick from, I think we have 237 distinct voices to choose from. The only thing I'm going to suggest as you're going down this path, y'all, make sure you're using platforms that have commercial rights cleared for the content you're using. There's a lot of stuff on AI that's funsies, you know, really cool to make stuff that you send to a friend but probably might get you in trouble, especially if you're a marketing organization putting money behind it. So make sure you're picking AI voices, generative assets, and et cetera, that have some form of copyright clearance or commercial use that that's acceptable. Uh, I'd like to point that out because it's a wonky space right now. Yes, uh, yes, it is. Thank you for pointing that out. Let's switch gears and talk a bit about optimizing the content. So let's say, we all say, you know, all agree, we should go create videos. We figure out how to do it. We have this, this library of videos or even hell one video. I don't feel like we wring out everything that we can from this asset the way that we should be. So talk to us about how to leverage this asset across different media mediums to really get all the value out of it. Absolutely. So think of it in a couple of ways. The first is where, you know, destination you were saying already. So these days. If you don't already post video on one of Instagram, maybe Snap, depends on what your brand does. I'm not going to vouch for it for every case. Instagram, yes, everybody's on Instagram one way or another. I even have an account. I don't do anything. TikTok, if you're not paying attention to TikTok right now, I would be paying attention to TikTok right now. No better way for hyper-local targeting. LinkedIn, amazing platform. Put your CEOs up on a little, give them a little platform to talk on and reach through through that platform. And of course, Meta as well. But don't forget your own website and don't forget your own email marketing strategies. This is two little, I don't think that they're hidden secrets, but things that I think a lot aren't aware of. By merely adding a contextually relevant video to your landing page, homepage, or any other part of your website, you will see an overnight SEO bump between 50 and 150%. So when I said contextually relevant, what that means is if you've got a video 
about your amazing PR firm, don't put up a video about funny cats. Like you got to put something up about PR and your strategies, your case studies, your clients. Similarly, email. Studies have shown that adding video to email could be in the subject line, video in parentheses, could be in the body with a like a thumbnail or simply linked to. You'll increase engagement on your email. That's including open and click-through rates by about 300%. So a lot of reasons to be on these platforms. The second thing on this, and Lindsay, interrupt me if there's anything in here we want to dive in deeper. But the second thing I want to encourage people to think about is repurposing your content. So you go get your CEO to go talk for 10 minutes about their vision and et cetera. You have 10 minutes of content, right? right. That's five videos, 10 videos, 20 videos. I don't know, but it's not one. And so if you're that company and... I know I'm talking to some of you right now that spent like $8,000 two years ago on an amazing commercial that you have never, ever reused other than maybe on your homepage. Go, you know, get the digital dust off that thing. Use tools. Again, I'm always mentioning ours when it's possible. Use tools like Augie, but there's many others. Opus is a good example where you can take your existing assets and get social ready clips from us, right? So take that 10 minute speech, give 30 seconds on why we're winning the market. Go get 45 seconds on how you're supporting your local community. Whatever the clips are, content repurposing is huge. I have one company that for every video, for every one video they make on our platform, they have 16 iterations for different destinations, different use cases, et cetera. So really think like, how do you do more with less, right? Because you don't need to go make more video every time you're doing something. Right. So I hope that's constructive, but, I want, but it, it's such a good and important question. I really wanted to get that out there. No, I love that. It's almost, you know, you think about the scraps on the floor, right? It's like you have your, you know, major main meal, you have scraps on the floor. They're still edible and taste good and um, you need to reuse them. Other places to look that we've seen success to are if you've done any video testimonials from your customers that you've turned into polished pieces, there's a lot of great elements of those that can be reused and repurposed things that maybe were left on the cutting room floor and then also owned events. A lot of you all are hosting customer summits where you're capturing a ton of video that never makes it anywhere because it didn't fit that, you know, that video, final video recap or whatever the case right. is. So look there. That is, I mean, to me, that is the easiest place to start is what do I, it's less scary, right? It's like, if you don't want to take the step into putting your face or someone's face on camera, okay. But that, if you already have video assets, start there. And whether you're using Augie or another platform, that is a, an easier way to like dip your toe in the water and get going by reusing right. what you already have. You mentioned the email, of infusing email or video into email. You also, in our sort of pre-show notes, talked about the SEO value. You did just mention it saying just simply by putting a video on a either landing page or in a blog post that it instantly overnight will up the SEO value. That is because Google is is valuing a multimedia format. What is driving that immediate uptick in SEO value? Yeah, Google has figured out that when they can drive people to a destination with video, like Google's whole, like the simplest basic of SEO is, you know, if it's good for Google to point people to because they click and then go off and do it, that's a loop, right? So in 2024, and this is probably actually about the past year and a half now, Google's realized that if they can index and point to a video destination, people will spend more time there. And that's sort of their simple key KPI. So I would strongly encourage, and by the way, it can be the same video on multiple pages, right? But you're gonna to wanna to think about your audience when you do that, of course, right? If you wanna have the company overview video on every single page of your website, it might do great on the SEO, but it might have diminishing returns on your, on your actual audience there. But finding ways to incorporate video in, it, let's say, every thought leadership piece, a blog post, right? You can just read it. Just read it in front of your webcam. Maybe throw a picture-in-picture -picture effect in there, a couple of you know on-screen titles, whatever. Get that thing live. Especially now, be experimenting, right? Like we had, we we do hackathons in the company. We built like four standalone products over the past couple of years. One was a game called Movie Idol. It was if you remember the Wordle when Wordle was everywhere, mm -hmm. like. We built one that was like, you watch a second of a movie, you have to guess what movie it is. It was a really fun experiment. It was a team building exercise, but we liked the game, so we pushed it live. Some random TikToker found it and played it 
and got 3 million views and oh our daily God. traffic went from, I don't know, like 500 to 50,000 in a oh day, you know? So don't forget that part. It's not just what you're doing and what you're in control of. It's what have you created to let other people do other things with, right? So you get sort of a little bit of that influencer marketing for free if you're doing interesting stuff. Yeah. What haven't we covered about this topic that you want to make sure that we tackle? I sort of touched on it, but it's the, this is a good time to be experimenting. I think there's, if you just even Google AI video tools, you'll find many. Go to, there's an AI for that. You'll find many. And figure out what helps your brand, right? Obviously, I'd love for you to use our product, but maybe that's not what you need. Maybe your brand needs different effects, right? We don't do the avatar thing. Maybe that's all you need. Great. Find it, try it, put it to work. You know, I think your comment, Lindsay, is one that I, I think should be like almost triple down, like get going on stuff, right? Don't sit in the wings and wait for the perfect tool, right? Use something, even if it's got a couple of little funkiness around the edges, you're probably going to still do better than waiting for it to be just right. And I'm a product guy by heart. And there's always a saying in product land, which is if people didn't have issues with your product, then you waited too long. Or if people can't find bugs in your product, you waited too long, yes. something like that. Yes. If people can't find flaws in your video marketing strategy, you've waited too long, right? Yeah. The best time it's, to be on TikTok yeah. four years ago. Next best time tomorrow. I totally agree. Just get going and yeah, don't let perfect get in the way of good, let alone good enough, right? Like, Bingo. Move in. Well, Jeremy, this has been awesome. I've loved reconnecting. I end every episode the same way, which is I ask our guests if they have a signature or favorite toast to send us out. Oh, you know, I've always been a big believer in, uh, you know, like personally, I say Lachaim a lot, but I think uh, a lot of people, I, I've always liked the sound of Sante. I've always felt it was a, it's what is a nice, all it means the same as Lachaim to your health. All right. Sante, so. Lachaim to your health. Cheers. Thanks again to Jeremy for joining me on SAS Half Full. It was great to reconnect. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about video and you are motivated to finally get moving on your video creation strategy. We always appreciate you tuning in and until next time, bottoms up.